Absolutely. Ladies and gents, something that is so important when it comes to property investment as an asset class is to understand how the returns of property work like. Because you need to keep in mind that there are a, a couple of different returns that you need to consider when it comes to property investment. This evening, I'm going to be talking to Yaku Khrubila, who's the Managing Director of Prosperity Enterprises. We're looking at property investment strategies that you need to know. And this is, of course, at the back of the property seminar, uh, the property investment seminar that private property in partnership with Pro Prosperity uh, Part uh, Enterprises is going to be hosting on the 2nd of April. We'll get to know all about it, what you can expect, and of course, the strategies that you need to keep in mind as a property investor. Yaku, good evening and thank you so much for joining us on the show good evening everyone so great to be here i think yaku let's first just kick start with the uh with the seminar that prosperity enterprises will be hosting in partnership with private property tell us what we can expect i'm sure many viewers at home are you know interested in bettering their property knowledge and certainly getting more insights in how they can better their property investment game Ladies and gents, this is an event that you do not want to miss on the 2nd of April, 2022, in Radisson Blue Hotel in Santon, uh, Private Property and Prosperity Enterprises is hosting a full day event from nine o'clock to five o'clock, where we are going to equip you and give you the resources to build your property portfolio and to be a successful property investor. We are going to look at property fundamentals. We are going to look at the opportunity of investing in South Africa, specific areas, specific strategies that you should follow when building a property portfolio, where to find the correct investment property or the, the, the right investment property. We are going to look at structuring. We'll talk about the numbers of property and how you should analyze property deals. We would look at, we will look at all the different softwares that you can use when uh, building a property portfolio and also on how to manage your property portfolio after you've acquired that first or that first couple of investment properties and how to run a, a successful property investment portfolio. I, you know, Yaku, I think that's already, you know, so many different areas that are very insightful for viewers at home who may be interested. And I want us to maybe look at, you know, touch on some of the areas that are going to be focused on for this seminar. I mean, one of the ones that you 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 mentioned um, and one that increasingly more of us are talking about because we understand the importance of systemizing your property investment and putting in those right systems is around, you know, the software that you need to manage uh, and certainly build your property portfolio. Perhaps talk to us about you know, what we're talking about when we look at the use of tech, the use of software in our property portfolios or how we run our property business and you know how that could benefit you in terms of growing your property business. Can you imagine that there was a time, Zama, where you would have to look through newspapers to find a property to acquire and how things have t I have changed in the last decade or two and um, just looking at private property itself as a platform and the phenomenal tools that you have just on private properties platform to find the correct properties to put filters in place to get reminders of, of um, certain properties that are going onto the market all of that are tools that you can use that can help you to build your property portfolio. Then I often say, I cannot imagine that there was a time where I would buy a property without pulling a report to look at the historical data um, from the deeds office on that property, what that property sold for in the past, what similar properties have sold for in the past year or two, and uh, to get all of, together all of that information and to use that information to make an informed decision when it comes to acquiring property and then just with all these companies um, managing large amounts of properties um, phenomenal data has been gathered 
through that through the activity of, of managing um, large databases of properties and that data provides us with such vital and important information information that we can use to make informed decisions when we are building our own property portfolios and those are just a couple of the points that we will focus on and and spend more attention on uh, at the property investment seminar on the 2nd of april and I think on that, Yaku, one of the key things, of course, when it comes to property investment is uh, to look at, to, have, to, to be able to look at the big picture of property before zoning in, whether it's on the type of, you know, property class you're going to focus on and looking at the data from a specific area. I want you to, you know, take us through the the, the property trends, especially when we look at property as an asset class. Uh, let's make it in the past 10 years, because there's still a debate around, you know, property investment as even especially bricks and mortar so not listed property as a a relatively viable uh you know method of investing and of course the, the big thing the big disclaimer i have to say to people at home you want to do your research there is no asset class that's a silver bullet in your investment um in as much as many of us make quite a significant amount of money in property many people lose money in property so you can lose money uh, it's not a guaranteed uh, method of acquiring money and you want to work with professionals when you make this decision and so with that disclaimer said yuck when we then look at property as a as an asset class and certainly a means of us investing uh, and and it being part of our investment portfolio what have been some of the historical trends that we essentially need to be mindful of because i think it's easy for people to look at data from the past two three years, but not actually take a holistic picture, um, which can be very dangerous as you and I both know. Absolutely. Ladies and gents, something that is so important when it comes to property investment as an asset clause is to understand how the returns of property work like. Because you need to keep in mind that there are a, a couple of different returns that you need to consider when it comes to property investment. Firstly, you've got the asset that is appreciating in value. That's your capital growth. That's the increase in value year on year on that investment. But remember, ladies and gents, that is not your only return on property investment. You also secondly have rental income that that property is generating. And we use a formula called net rental yield to determine your rental income after your expenses, what percentage of your um, what is your, your annual rental and less expenses? What percentage is that of your purchase price when you are acquiring the property? And then when you want to look at the returns on your property portfolio, you need to consider both the capital growth on the one side and the rental yield on the other side. But then I want to throw in a third lever into this, uh, into this scenario. And that is the fact that you are not just investing your own cash. You are actually using the bank's cash as well to make that investment. And that's where internal rate of return comes in. So you've got these three elements that you need to keep into consideration when you want to compare apples to apples with, with asset classes and, and with investing in property. Because remember, with property investment, you could use as much as 90 or 100% even of the bank's money, which, significant, which significantly changes the return components to uh, investing in property, for example. But that being said, ladies and gents, just looking at the property price growth of property in South Africa, as well as the net rental yield, those two combined already gives a very decent return, which makes investing in property still a lucrative investment today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Yaku Khorbila, who is the Managing Director at Prosperity Enterprises. We're in conversation uh, about property investment strategies that you need to know. And of course, reflecting on the upcoming seminar that you can look forward to on the 2nd of April that will be hosted by Prosperity Enterprises as well as private property. And I also want to look at, if you're a property investor, what have been some strategies that have that have served you well in your investment journey. I think one of the great 
great things about the show is our ability to share each other's uh, knowledge and certainly share in each other's experiences as much as possible. The one that I will give, and I always emphasize this one, is don't buy into the FOMO. Uh, we tend to find, especially now more than ever, you know, talks around uh, you know, buying in buying now because we've got historically low interest rates. And while that factor is a good factor if you're really looking into investing in property, it alone is not sufficient as a driver for you to get into property investment. There are so many different factors that you always have to consider holistically and not just one. You know, the other one, of course, is there are certain developments that come in and the marketing is amazing. And, you know, you'll get certain people on social media saying you must buy, buy, buy. And this is going to be a great investment. And you don't understand the fundamentals. You don't understand the, 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 the underlying fundamentals of that as an asset class, but you also don't understand what the cost factor uh, with that particular property are so you want to make sure that you're best equipped as you know somebody going into property investment with all the insights with all the data before signing on any dotted line uh, as much as possible because we want you to not lose money uh, many of us have lost some money and I think the school fees that we have paid is sufficient you don't need to pay for that school fees at all it's very expensive school fees that I think not everybody needs to pay for at all so when we talk about it it's because we've been there trust me it's, it's not nice losing money is not nice especially when you just didn't know better but of course now you do you've got the likes of myself Yaku of course sharing great insights and knowledge that can help you along the way and of course Yaku talking about helping us along the way is then understanding um, the different ways that you can buy a, a property because I think this is when I talk about school fees this is part of the school fees I had to pay, I had to pay is that we're still uh, getting into a property investment journey not knowing the different kinds of entities we could potentially uh, buy our properties in and the ways we can structure that property business that is very tax efficient and maximizes profits as much as possible I think at a high level We'll just talk us through some of the considerations that we need to bear in mind when it comes to which entity to buy into and certainly just sort of best thoughts when it also comes to structuring ladies and gents when it comes to building a property portfolio your foundation is your structuring the first thing that we teach our clients when it comes to property investment is that you do not want to have assets or debt in your own name. The reason why you don't want assets in your own name is because you want those assets to be protected. And also one day when you pass away, you don't want all kinds of fees like estate duties and executive fees and capital gains uh, tax to be charged on your deceased estate. But then also you don't want to have debt in your own name and there are large amounts of debt. And the reason for that is you very quickly reach a ceiling where you cannot grow your property portfolio further and now that leaves you then with looking at entities to build your property portfolio in. So when you speak to any property investor that has built a significant property portfolio, you will realize that they have used entities to build their property portfolio in. So you don't want to own property in your own name. So that leaves you then with two choices in which you can buy a property or, or build your property portfolio. And the first one is in a property trust and the second one is in a property company. Now, a trust in a company works a little bit different, um, whereas a trust is like an entity of its own and cannot be owned by anyone. So you can't actually say, I own a trust or it's my trust. It's almost like a person of its own or an entity of its own. Whereas with a company, you are still the shareholder of the company. Now, the disadvantage of that is the fact that indirectly you are then still the owner or you still own the asset in your name because you are the shareholder of the company. And that is why many property investors, when they go to a company route, the property company route, they would put a holdings trust as the shareholder of that company. So that then leaves you with either owning your properties in a property trust or secondly, owning your properties in a company with a holdings trust as the shareholder. 
And of course, that is, you know, insights on the various ways to think about uh, structuring your property portfolio and some of the considerations that are so important for you to think through. Uh, because as I was saying earlier, many of us tend to pay school fees, uh, very expensive school fees, and make some mistakes in the early stages of our property investment journey. And that's something that we do not want you to do at all. We want to make sure that we save you money and make you money. I think uh, nobody wants to lose money, especially when it is avoidable of course taking more of your questions and comments on our facebook page this evening as we talk about property investment strategies that you need to know and yaku i think i i'd want to find out for, from you you know what are some of the top strategies that you would want people watching tonight's episode to be top of mind regardless of where you are in your property investment journey because we have people who are in the you know beginning end we have people who are slightly more seasoned and have been doing this for for quite a bit you know what are your go-to strategies when you think property investment and the key fundamentals that you always uh keep on top of mind as you navigate and certainly run your property business once your foundation is in place your structure is in place your next step would then be to determine what strategy you are going to follow when you are building your property portfolio. And the first point that I want to uh, make, ladies and gents, is the difference between a capital growth and a cash flow strategy. First thing that you need to decide when it comes to what strategy you are going to follow is whether it will be more lean towards a capital growth. Remember, we spoke of the two returns of property or rental yield and your capital growth or your capital appreciation, to which one are you going to lean? Now, it's very important to understand the implications of following a more aggressive capital growth or a more aggressive cash flow strategy. One is not better than the other. It depends very much on where you are at and what your personal situation looks like. If you are somebody that, for example, earns a decent salary and a decent income, but that doesn't have a lot of time, you would possibly lean more towards a capital growth strategy that is more passive and where you can actually afford to push money monthly into that property portfolio. Whereas if you are somebody that is starting out and that is, does not have a lot of capital to your disposal or a lot of cash flow on a monthly basis, you would want to follow more of a cash flow strategy where you don't have a big shortfall or any shortfalls at all and where you build a property portfolio with positive cash flow from day one. So that would be one of the first steps that you take. And then as there are many property investors that are thinking of starting out, I want to touch briefly, and this is something that comes out of one of our modules at the property seminar as well, under the module of property investment strategies and approaches. And I'm just going to look at three of them tonight. And that is buy to live, buy to flip, and buy to let. Now, buy to live is a great place to start, especially if you need a roof over your head. If you don't need to rent and you can own the property in which you, um, uh, in, in which you live, that is a great start as a property investor. And the reason for that, and, and that is, of course, I just want to say, ladies and gents, with the numbers still making sense of this property that you live in, as if you would have rented it out to someone else. Now, the advantage of starting your property portfolio with your home as the first property is the fact that there's a couple of, 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 of um, protections and, and, and covers that you've got. Now, the first one is you don't have to appoint a management, a rental management company. So that means your rental yield, your net rental yield in effect is higher. Now, let's assume one, one of your entities own your property and you rent from that entity. Remember, we run our property portfolio like a business. So even if you live in the property and your entity owns it, you are going to pay rent like any other tenant. Now, you don't have to pay a rental agency a commission, which means that the net rental is more. Secondly, you don't have to be so concerned about defaults because surely you are going to pay yourself. And then thirdly, any improvements that you make on that property for your benefit while you are living there is also adding value to the property. But as I said, ladies and gentlemen, it's critically important then that the numbers of that investment still make sense as if you would have rented it out to another tenant. 
Then the second strategy that or approach that I want to speak about tonight is buy to flip. And that is where you specifically find a property that you can buy at a good price, maybe improve it or renovate it, and then sell it at a profit. Now, a lot of people that want to make chunks of capital available will follow an approach where they acquire property, improve it or renovate it, and, and then sell it. The danger of, of such a strategy is, of course, the carry cost. If you have to keep that property too long on your books without income, and then, of course, the tax disadvantages as well, because when you buy and sell a property, it's not very tax friendly. And, and that would be a consideration that you would need to look at. And then the third strategy, anybody that would know me know that this is a strategy that I absolutely love, is a buy to let strategy where you are buying property for the long term and where you are renting it out. And then there are many sub strategies that you can follow in a buy to let strategy one could be to pay off the properties as quickly as possible and to level the rental income on the one side on the complete other end is the refinancing strategy where you would constantly refinance the property to make more capital available and to use that capital uh, for your working capital or your working capital requirements and also to acquire your next buy to let investment property and as we wrap up this evening, Yaku, any final comments uh, and tips for our viewers at home, especially ahead of that seminar that's taking place on the 2nd? Great. Uh, first and foremost, I hope to see many of you um, at the seminar the 2nd of April at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Johannesburg. And I'm looking forward to meeting with many of you as well. And then maybe just one last tip that I want to give you and one last analogy that I would like to use. When it comes to property investment is i would often compare property investment to fishing where you have a number of fishing rods where you put lines in the water and you wait for a bite now those of you that have done that kind of fishing would know that it's a very patient game that you need to play you need to put the lines in the water and there's not much that you can do to make the fish bite bite yes you can put good baits on etc 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 but it also requires a lot of patience and then when the right deal comes along to, to, to go with that deal, we're sitting with a great platform like private property where you can look at many properties. The more properties you look at, the better you will become as a property investor and the better deals you will make. And then the more offer to purchases you submit, the better deals you will make. So you don't just want to submit one offer to purchase and then buy that property. You want to submit multiple offer to purchases maybe a couple first gets rejected before one gets accepted and then you want to bring that deal in or reel that deal in um and and patiently wait for the right wait for the right opportunity to come as i must say just like you get motivated sellers they are motivated buyers and as property investors we shouldn't be motivated buyers that are so excited to just buy the next property that we don't do our homework and that we don't make sure that we make a good investment. And that's where we're going to leave it this evening, Yaku. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. And that is Yaku Robela, who's a managing director at Prosperity Enterprises, wrapping up the Tuesday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Ozamantungwa Kumalo. We have shared the details of that seminar in the comments section. If you're interested in attending, do go to the link in the comments section and get all the details. It's on the 2nd of April, and you'll be able to uh, certainly look forward to Yaku in that particular seminar. And from myself, Ozamantungwa Kumalo, and the rest of the private property podcast team that's it from us this evening we'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m until then hope you're staying home and staying safe